Hello, my friends, and welcome back. We are working in our play along journal here. And this is a fun opportunity on this page because I included a flip out and the flip out just makes it so that the page is kind of extra long when you flip it out. So I had this idea of trying to take advantage of this long space in a new and kind of different way than I normally would. So if you're familiar with my artwork, you know that I usually don't do realistic things. So my goal here is not to be realistic, but I do love um, having flowers and different botanicals and different things in my work. So it's something that I try to do, but I thought it would be really fun here to actually flip out this page and draw like a stem that goes along the whole thing. Now, I do like the way that this turns out in the end, but I will say one disclaimer up front. One thing I would definitely change about this because it ends up looking a little bit plain in my opinion. I think I would have done some collage in the background first. Nothing crazy, but maybe some black and white collage um, some different text patterns. Since the left side of the page and the right side of the plate are both um, plain papers, with the craft paper and the white paper. I just think it's a little bit too simple in that regard. Like it just needs a little bit more pattern and things going on. But in the end, I think it was really fun to take a kind of new idea for me and just go with it. So it can be kind of scary to do that because we don't know how it's going to work out. But in the end, we can close our journal and move on from it if we don't like it. We can um, determine that we maybe like some things about it and we want to continue to grow that idea and adapt it and see where it could go. Or we can just be thankful that we do get fun, innovative ideas and, hey, this one didn't work out and that's okay. But unless you, you know, try sometimes, you never know. They're just in your head then. You have to see how it goes. So when those sparks of ideas do come for me, I like to... to try them in some regard. And you can't always try new ideas right away, but you can keep a... Um, a notebook or even on your phone, you can write down those different fun ideas, whatever it works for you. So I drew this long stem here and first I did it with pencil. I didn't want to have anything too concrete. I also could have like printed out a picture and traced it if I wanted to, um, but I was okay with the, the leaves just looking really kind of um, simple here. That's all right. So after I did the pencil, I came in with my Stabilo All and just kind of traced over where I had already gone. Um, nothing too particular, but I wanted to bring in that kind of grungy look. If I was more comfortable in that drawing process, I could have started with the Stabilo All, um, but I like to start with that pencil first, just because it gives me some wiggle, wiggle room. If I really don't like how something turned out, you know, you can just erase it. So um, after doing the Stabilo All, I drew with it uh, <clears throat> just dry, and then I took a damp paintbrush and um, moved that pigment around. I kept pretty much true to where the drawing actually was, but I could have moved that pigment around on other spots of the piece of paper as well. I could have filled in the leaves more with some of that black wash color. Um, there was a lot of different options there, but adding in that kind of grunge, I think just makes it a lot more interesting than just a regular drawing, especially because it is so simple. The grunge just adds a little bit extra. So I added some scribbles in the background and a little bit of masking tape that I kind of used to bring some kind of pattern onto the page just a little bit. Now I have the flip out and the flat part that's actually going to be seen when the journal is flipped to that page. I want to add something interesting in there. So I'm okay that you can't see that um, those leaves from the top all the way to the bottom. That's not necessarily my intention, but when you flip it open, you can kind of see that long picture there. And it's kind of fun that then that's kind of vertical instead of the typical horizontal that we would do in a journal like this. Another thing that I want to make note of is I had this idea for this drawing, but instead of doing it right down the middle of the page um, and having that um, the leaves be fully shown on each side of that stem, I made a conscious choice to make it kind of on um, 
one third of the page where the stem line goes down it's more pleasing aesthetically to the eye in my opinion and it's a little bit more unexpected than just trying to fit that whole drawing within the page so either way I think would have looked cool but this almost makes it feel a little bit more abstract than if I were to just trying to get the whole plant image within the page itself, especially when you're working in a small journal like this. I believe these pages are about three and a half inch square. Um, if you try to fit those larger shapes within the page itself, it just feels really kind of cramped and contained for Versus if we let that shape go off the edge. I really notice this a lot of the times when I do larger circles. I like that circle to kind of go off the edges and um, expand beyond the boundaries of the page. I'm going to jump in now to the teal journal. And this is the, the second journal that I do in this play along journal series. Make sure to go back if you want to for more inspiration and watch all the previous week's worth of videos and to get some fun ideas for your own art journaling as well. The products that I use, I tried to link in the description below. So check that out. Um, you can also find all the other links for me, where to follow me on Instagram, my my website, my shop, um, classes, all of that good stuff. Find that in the description below. And I'm taking a different approach for this page. So I liked the elongatedness of that um, stem, but it doesn't mean that every time I have a flip out page that I have to do the same thing. It's fun to take that inspiration from the pages that we may have done before and adapt them and try them in new ways. And um, that can be nice and comfortable, but other times we can do something different and kind of just see how it goes. So I'm going with, it's still going to be relatively simple. So I'm using some of my scraps here, my little pieces of paper from different made papers and found papers and doing um, a few little collage um, sections here on the page. So wherever you put just a couple pieces, you want to kind of group them together with their friends, I think, um, because I think it just makes things more interesting rather than just a random scrap kind of on the page. If you put several together, it makes it look a lot more intentional. So um, I did some little pieces on the left hand side and I'm bringing them on some onto the right hand side as well. I'm using some of the same pieces of papers which can make everything flow quite nicely rather than just random um, on every side. It doesn't always have to be that way but having some of those same elements that go on both sides just make things feel really balanced even though it's not a um, symmetrical. So uh, balance does not always mean that it has to be perfectly symmetrical. It can kind of just mean like the same amount of weight on each side or bringing some of those elements in. So really play around with that concept that we don't have to do the exact same thing on both sides of the paper. We can just kind of bring in, maybe it's a technique or um, the supply that we're using. So I'm using my white gesso and that's one of my favorite things I think to do with um, when I collage. So I like to make the edges almost blurred into the background a little bit. And I know that it's craft paper on the left hand side. So it technically doesn't blend into the background. It's a different color, but kind of like blurring those edges in a way that you can't always tell where the edge of the paper for the collage is ends and where it begins, kind of just rubbing that in with the gesso. And I usually use a dry paintbrush for that. Um, my goal is not to add extra water or liquid and really like spread the paint around. I'm almost um, taking that paintbrush and like scrubbing it into the page. It's not that I'm pushing really hard, but scrubbing is kind of actually a good word to use there because of the effect that it gives. Hopefully my point is coming across there, but I really do like to use that when I do different collage techniques because I, I just like the edges of um, not being able to really tell where it ends and where it begins. So it just adds a little bit more intrigue to the page. It makes the viewer 
kind of look at things in more detail. And I really like to have those details that are a surprise on the page. I hope that you guys loved this week's video. I will see you next time. And I hope that you have a good one.